I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with Sophie Canali, the costume designer behind the 30 gazillion costumes on Netflix's Bridgerton. And Sophie, I guess my first question is, you, know, you worked on the show last season. And I did, yeah. you're kind of taking the reins with season two. Was that an intimidating challenge? Was that an exciting challenge? How did you feel when you kind of moved up to the head of it? Yeah, like it was incredibly exciting. You know, I'd been lucky and very fortunate to work with Ellen and, you know, help her create this, this world. And so it was really nice to take the reins and then kind of, you know, have this amazing foundation and then push everything a little bit further, you know, forward with kind of my sense of design is really taking the characters and pushing their details and things like that and really making them individual. You know, we're such individuals as characters, you know, and I like taking elements off the script and then being able to push them forward. So yeah, it's, you know, it's a dream. Well, and I think what you're saying about the, the, the character really being reflected and the costumes working together, um, where do you start with that? Is there something in the script that jumps out to you that uh, just kind of sparks something in your imagination? Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, I, you know, I have the really fortunate, you know, family, the Sharma family to design for this season. So, you know, it starts with looking at period correct, uh, um, images so we're looking at paintings and and illustrations and references and fabrics and then it's just like pushing it forward I think it's always good to know the rules to break the rules so it's nice to have that foundation of period correct and then take contemporary elements and also I think with color palettes you know especially with the Sharmas it was really kind of taking with Kate especially, the emeralds and the, the the jewel tones of India and kind of putting those, you know, into, into her dresses and her Spencer jackets. So it is, yeah, it's, it's doing your research first and then being able to, you know, move them forward. And especially with Bridgerton in a contemporary way as well, because we're not trying to be period correct. Yeah, the anachronism is almost kind of built into the show as a, as a whole. Um, and you mentioned, you know, that color palette with, with Kate, um, and so, do you see each character with a color, with a specific color palette? Yeah, I think especially in Bridgerton, I think you know it was very you know very much established by Ellen in season one, where we had Daphne in her blues, we had you know the pastel colors of the Bridgerton family, then we had the citruses of the Featheringtons. So I wanted you know I wasn't changing the wheel. I thought that was a really you know clever idea, and I think it was good to move that forward um, into into season um, two. And you know I, I kind of brought those colors into into each of the Sharma's um, color palettes as well. And then also with Lady Danbury, she was in quite a lot of purples in season one, but because I was using quite a lot of purples and tonally with Mary Sharma and Kate Sharma, I then moved Lady Danbury into kind of more maroons and, and, and reds and, you know, really kind of strong punchy colors, you know, to match her, her character as well. And I think, you know, you can see with both the Sharma sisters, Kate's in this really, you know, jewel colors of India. And then her sister is, you know, a softer character. You know, she's, you know, she's looking for love. And I, I use these pinks and these lilacs and these softer tones to really kind of match her, her, her sweeter and kind of naive, uh, naive kind of um, personality in, in a sense, you know, so, so, and also, there were scenes that I'm really, you know, take colors and make sure that, you know, the costumes are, you know, are fantastic in Bridgerton. It's really lovely to showcase everything, but I don't want them to always overpower kind of the contents of what's happening in the scene. And you'll see with, especially with, um, you'll see with when Kate's in her, in her bed and we've got Edwina at her bedside, I really, you know, used a lot of peaches and, and very simple fabrics because I didn't want the dresses to overpower. So there is that simplicity at times and that's just to, to help the tone of the scene. I, I feel like um, with, with the character of Anthony taking kind of center stage with this, with this season and he, you know, go, has kind of like this dark journey to him. I yeah. feel like, it, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like the costumes, um, cause I noticed that he was in like a lot of darker colors, yeah. especially some dark blues that were just stunning. Um, were those, I assume those were all intentional. 
Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it, like he was in season one. We saw him as such kind of like a, a rape, you know, a cad, and you know, and he, you know, he was the only one that really had like the cream breeches. And I, I purposely took him out of those and put him into a darker tone. Um, it was something that Chris Van Dusen and I discussed. It was one of our first conversations, actually, about how Anthony would, you know, and also using teals as well, which was, you know, those greens that we we see Kate in as well. And, you know, their final scene, he's in a lot lighter, um, you know, waistcoat. And, and that was intentional. You know, it was, you know, it was brighter. His, you know, it, it was it was um, the colours represented his mood, really, you know, throughout, you know, this serious kind of, you know, frustrated um, Anthony that we saw in season two. I, I would have to imagine that in in working with the actors and you know that you, these are such beautiful ornate costumes. Do you do you work to also make them like comfortable for the actors who have to be in them for a long period of time? Of course, of course. You know, it's you know they you know a costume always has to be practical. So you know, and I think. You know, understandably, there are the corsets, which, you know, I, you know, I haven't worn one, but I, I know they're not, you know, I know they're not ideal, but, you know, people are used to wearing jeans and T-shirts. So, of course, of course, it's going to be different from, you know, contemporary, you know, everyday wear. So, but also with period costume, as much as we're not period correct, we're still, you need that silhouette, you need that base layer, you need that to, to be able to, to cut and the structure of an empire line dress over you know a corset so so the corsets are very important to you know but but understandably you know we want to make everyone as comfortable as possible and because Bridgerton not only is not period correct in in visually in the action that they you know the way people sit on this you know the settees how Penelope's on the floor how they they lie down and you know so so we you know each you know the actors do have short corsets as well so we can you know and long corsets um with the girls so they can do the action you know because you know at the end of the day we're all working to camera and we all want you know we we can't we want the actors, the director to be able to direct his actors in anything they can do. And it's for my job for to to make sure that they're not restricted in a way that they can't do something because of the costume. Uh, with, with working on a show this big, uh, with with this many people, um, has to be just a logistical challenge. And I'm putting it probably mildly to say it's a logistical challenge and not a nightmare. Um, mm. <laughs> so. so how how do you deal with that how is is it like just jump on the train and go yeah yeah it's a military operation it really is i i was really you know there's 120 people in house you know and then you know we have that you know a lot of out workers as well you know making for for principal uh, characters as well um so yeah i had an amazing um team of assistant designers for assistant designers who are not only creative but organized and and that's like a real key i i design in quite a logistical way and it's i uh, it's fast thinking it's decision making and and sticking to the decisions as well you know because time is of the essence and especially because it's you know you're you're you know the cutters are creating one dress that is then made um, but at the same time, you know, there's a jewellery team that are creating jewellery to match, you know, so it's making sure that everything's working at the same time, that a hat, that gloves are being dyed to the colour, that then will go to the embroiderers, um, you know, and, a, a, you know, so it is, yeah, it's a, it's not your average job, you know, people join Bridgerton and, and you you can't, you can't describe it. And I've, you know, I've worked in the industry for 15 years and it's, it's, it, there's no show like it. So, Coming on in in this second season, um, I, I I feel like you can't talk about costumes without talking about the queen um, because it, it, I mean every you almost like expect as a viewer to see what is the queen going to be wearing now. Um, was that intimidating? Was that uh, or was that just exciting? No, it's all just exciting. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, like we, you know, I wouldn't work in the industry if I didn't like a challenge. I can tell you that. But um, yeah, no, it's great, and and also like with fittings with Golda, you know, with it, most actors, you know, we're we're fitting the dresses three, four times, so to get the perfect cut. So and with Golda, it's you know, it's really nice because 
often, you know, it would be that final fitting where she'd see all the decoration because, you know, she we'd fit it and then she wouldn't see it. And it's just so lovely. And, and the decoration is such a key part of her costumes. So, so yeah. And also, you know, and in the same right, you have an embellishment team. The jewellery team often make all the embellishment to, to then be sewn on. So, yeah, it's... um. I don't think I think you're so involved in 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 the project itself and, and the new scripts and so the intimidation it's just you know it's just a non-stop train that you're kind of always in and you're just like you know you're absorbed into it so you don't really have time to kind of step back and 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 look at what you're doing because and it will and also because I've been in it for so many years you know it, you know it's been my life you know for a good few years that you actually forget that, that, you know, that's just, you know, your kind of average day is a day of Bridgerton. It's just like, oh yeah, it's not always like that. Well, and that's, an, I think, an interesting point because, you know, Bridgerton is so specific a universe. So, you know, in terms of, you know, choosing projects, are you drawn to different types of projects in terms of, you know, do you want to do something that's completely the opposite of Bridgerton next? Yeah, yeah. Like I think, um, I think the thing is with Bridgerton, it's just or anything. You know, I I love a chat. You know, it's the, the nice thing about the industry is you do different things, you you work with different people, and it's a challenge, and that's what I like. And it's nice to to have that variety as well because I think that really kind of pushes your boundaries and things like that. So so yeah, it's not that you know I just want to work in Regency, so you know, or, or period dramas either. I think contemporary is you know contemporary dramas are really important as well. So you know it comes down to you know scripts and you know directors and everything. So yeah, it's um that's the joy of the the film and television industry is you know all these different scripts bring you know different chapters and different journeys in your life yeah and and bridgerton is has has become such a phenomenon in mm. in so many different ways what is it about that this this series what is it about this period drama that you think has captured so many people i think i think it's just really refreshing to have such a diverse cast. I think it's, it's so colorful. It's so rare to have something, you know, I think people really enjoy that it's not period correct. It's kind of, it's brought a completely different audience to, to a show. So, and you know, I think that the locations are beautiful. The sets are beautiful. The hair and makeup is absolutely stunning. So it's this combination of everything. And I do feel like in the last few years, you know, obviously, you know, all of us living through a pandemic, it's been a really tough time. And I think having something so refreshing and fun and it, it's escapism. And that's what, you know, that's why we watch television and, and, um, and, and films. You know, that's why we go to the cinema, because we escape into a different life. And, and it's really fun and, you know, incredible acting. And yeah, so I think it is pure escapism. Is there a specific character um, from the season that that was just a total joy to design for? Was there a character that you just latched onto and said, oh, I know exactly what I want to do here? I think Eloise is very close to my heart. I think, you know, all her tuckers, all the fabric manipulation. I think there's a lot of cuff detail and a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, detail on her neck um, collars and things like that. I think, you know, I really, you know, that was straight away. I was like, that's exactly what I want to do using chiffons and really kind of playing around with fabrics. But I don't know. I, I wasn't involved with the men in season one and, and being able to kind of take on all their, their, their you know, their characters was really, you know, um, an absolute joy. So, you know, the trouble with Bridgerton is there's so many characters and there's so much diversity in it that it's like, it's, you can't decide, like, you can't choose. Like, I love designing for Benedict. I love designing for Anthony, like Colin's waistcoat. You know, it's just you know, it's just nonstop. And the Sharmas were just an absolute joy to, to work with and, and, and create as well. And, you know, I've, you know, I've traveled in India and I was so excited to be able to, you know, take that knowledge with me and, and kind of put it on screen in elements. And, you know, one of my favorite scenes is the hunt. I really, you know, I took, I took contemporary fabrics being, you know, sporting tweeds and herringbones and, 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 and work them into Regency, Regency cuts for the men. And, you know, that color palette with, and, and we made all of the sporting artists costumes for that scene as well. So I, I really like that as a whole. So, 
yeah, I, I honestly, there's just, you know, there's just too many crests at the Cowpers. I absolutely love designing the Cowpers. They're really good fun. And then the Featheringtons, you just have so much fun with those guys. So I, I like, it's like nonstop. You can't, I can't decide, sorry. It just, it just makes me smile just thinking about it. Yeah, exactly. And also it is, you know, I have to, I have to keep rewatching it to kind of, you know, to keep remembering because there are so many characters and so many costumes. I'm like, I've got it, you know, I've got, you know, I, I, I hate leaving things out, you know, of interviews because, but you know, obviously you can't cover everything. And, you know, I really, I think the accessories this season were really key and the jewellery was just absolutely stunning. The, the jewellery team really, you know, they worked so hard to create, uh, you know, collections for each each costume. And, you know, and, and I think, you know, that really kind of brings the outfits together it is the hats and the reticules and you know it's it's lovely so so yeah well it is it is just lovely and you know you can watch it a gazillion times and find something new and beautiful in every in every shot um so sophie congratulations um everybody go to goldderby.com make your predictions for the emmys and uh stay tuned uh, for interviews with more contenders uh, throughout the season sophie canali uh, congratulations thank you so much thank you